Now, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Listen Doctor Radio coming to you guys with a brand new story coming from out of Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm going to talk to you guys about the story with us a little bit, and I'm going to show you guys a clip. It's going to be very short. Um, I'm going to show you guys a clip, and then I'm going to give my thoughts on it afterwards. Um, a young man was shot and killed yesterday evening um, at the uh, Moat Shot Apartments off of Louisiana Avenue, police said, in the apartment complex. Um, and um, he was 22 years old. He was shot to death, pronounced dead on the scene. Um, and this happened in Lafayette. This happened just a block. Not even a block, like two, two, maybe a hundred steps <laughs> from where we used to stay at in Lafayette. Um, and I'm going to show you guys a, a, the news clip. I'm going to get my thoughts on it. It's a very sad story, so uh, pay attention to it. And uh, after we show you the news story, I'm get my commentary. All right, let's go. Tell yourself in. Be that same man you was when you picked up that gun and you shot my child multiple times. He didn't deserve it. A Lafayette mother is pleading for the person responsible for her son's death to turn themselves in days after King of Cleveland Sr. was shot and killed at Montanto Apartments off of Louisiana Avenue. Police are not saying if they have any leads or suspects. But as Chris Welsey reports, his family says they know who did it. And they're opening up the first tonight. It's a story you'll see only on three. My son had a life. He was working hard, making honest money. And you took that from him. You took that from me. You took that from my family. Tina Lewis wants answers and accountability in her son's death. This was his baby sister. His graduation, when he got his apartment. Lewis says her son Kendrick always had a smile and was one of the hardest working people she knew. He loved fashion and the finer things in life, but most of all, he loved his family. He looks just like his daddy. Asked just like his mom, just like him. Got them live just like him. Kendrick's son is seven months old and he also leaves behind his girlfriend. He came head of his house. He was a role model for many. Many people love my kids. Many people love them. Lewis says her son never turned a gun to solve problems. She now prays police will make an arrest soon so her family can see justice. I want you to sit in that cell and think about what you do. Think about how you took my child away from me. Think about how you took a man who was a father away from his seven-month-old child. He didn't deserve to die the way you died. In life yet, Chris Welty, KTC TV3. Lewis also tells us her son is related to the man shot and killed Monday afternoon in Sunset. She says Kendrick Lawrence was her son's uncle. The shootings, though, are not believed. The Louisiana Avenue shooting and others story. around Acadiana are pro Now, let's go straight into the monologue. Uh, let's go straight into my rant. And um, I'm going to really tell you guys how I feel about it. Now, in this story, you can tell something's not adding up. And what is that that's not adding up, you say? It's because of the fact that the parent of this young man said that they know who did it. And at the end of the video, they tell you what? There's no suspect in custody. They don't know who did it. They don't have any leads. She was live on TV, said she knew who did it. I have a problem with that, ladies and gentlemen. Secondly, now, I did my own research, like any journalist should, and I looked on this guy's Facebook page, and I see that he has a picture. First thing I see is a picture of him with a loaded gun. Now, you might say, what's wrong with a loaded gun? She said her son didn't handle situations with guns and blah, blah, blah. So I would say to myself, why do he need a gun? But nobody need a gun. But the picture that he has, it looks like he's stunning on Facebook with guns. 
Now, this is where I come into play with the blame. Blame. I blame the mom. I'm going to tell you why I blame the mom. Because in a black community, we like to always say, what goes on into this house stays in this house. But if you listen to the whole conversation, what she was telling these people, her son became the man of his household. He became the man of the household. Very young, like I had to. I remember when I was six years old, becoming the man of the household, me and my brother, being on canal, tap dancing at the age of six. It happened. Still, trying to take shit at the age of six and up. I can remember it. So I can remember growing up real, real easy. I mean, real, real hard. Really, really young. So I said this to say this, if she must have, at all accounts, was kind of a great mom to a certain extent, because the guy graduated. But that's what we inspire our kids to do, just do the minimum. Graduate, be a football player, basketball player, rapper. We don't give our kids good dreams like be a owner of a restaurant, um, be a doctor, a lawyer. We don't give them the type of dreams because we think those dreams are too high. They can't reach for those. So we give them something small that they can reach for, that everybody has and everybody wants, that everybody can't really get or really maintain. Now, I put the blame on the mom because the mom could have done a lot more. At 22 years old, her son has not had any experience anything in his life. He had a baby. So then he had his baby at what, 20, 21? For the game, 21, maybe 20, 21? He haven't had a life to live. Now the cycle is repeating. Now this baby is being raised now with a single mom because he's not there anymore. And the cycle repeats. She's probably going to fuck with some no good ass nigga. And the cycle repeats. So this young man, baby, is going to be just like his dad. A statistic. Trapped in the ghetto. She could have got her kids out the fucking ghetto. She could have got her kids out of Lafayette. Took her kids somewhere else. Made a better life for them. I have to put the blame on the parent. Now, I, a logic person, would say, Why do he need a gun if you say your son doesn't? Handle a situation with guns. And you say your son wasn't out there doing this type of stuff. Why he need a gun? We have to stop this shit, black people. But I, I get blamed. And I get called names for calling out. When you talk about the dead. And in the story, do you understand that? Every time somebody black dies. We never say how bad they were. We never say how bad they they did to people, what they did to people. We always give the good. That's why we always keep getting the same situations that we keep getting. I want to say rest in peace, young man. I'm going to put the pictures in the videos. It's going to be on either side. I don't know what side it's going to be on. But I want you guys to pay attention to this. And check this out again. Check this video out one more time. Oh yeah. Gotta put the glasses on. Can't see. Dirty nine minutes, so I'm gonna put the video in here again so you guys can see it through the video. I want you guys to put the link and share and share this video and let people know what's going on. We got a lot of things going on, man, a lot of things taking place. I want you guys to get prepared, bro, because it's not the end. Black on black crime. But I don't ever hear nobody black go out there and march for shit like this. I don't ever hear nobody black go out there and say things that should be spoken when shit happens like this. We hide behind bullshit. We want to make it seem like everything's perfect. But it's not. Rest in peace, young man. Hope your family get the justice. And people, if you do know who did it, go out there and tell the people who did it. Stop sleeping on the shit. It's not making it no better. 
you retaliating ain't gonna make it no better. Senseless that. That should have been not. It could have been prevented. Appreciate you guys for watching, man. I wish y'all want to see it. This is the Listen Doctor Radio.